dog related to him, by the way? Just tossing that out there. <laughs> okay, uh, mashallah again, Zakhalah and uh, Sayyid. Now, one of the questions I had in my mind when Sayyid was talking about is what would have happened if he actually got kidnapped from his elementary school? Now, most people would have just called the police, but we have a better option. We have Care Missouri Director Faison Sayyid. <laughs> Like many of you, I thought Nabil was going to say something else after that, but he just kind of like, that's enough said, he just left. So, my name is Faison Sayed, I'm the Executive Director for the Council on American Islamic Relations, and what we do is we defend the Muslims against discrimination from other people. But of course, mashallah, we still have uncles in the community. But one of, or as my father said that basically if anybody messes with the Muslims, my job is to go to that person and be like, Are you? Bas, bas. The phone. So several years ago, I like many of you, was looking to get married. Inshallah, some of you are still young, you're gonna get married in the future. But a few years ago, I was in that phase. I just graduated from Drake University. I studied astronomy, physics, and mathematics, and then I switched to politics and history. So my parents, when I came home, they just said, Beta, you're a failure. <laughs> so my mom and my dad, they sat me down, and they're like, Beta, son, son, Beta. Beta means son. Beta, son. You're not getting any younger. You're not getting any more attractive. Oh. <laughs> Mashallah, they seem friends, they can be very direct. <laughs> And let's face it, we don't know what you're studying at all. We have no idea what you, what you, what you graduated. And actually, I shouldn't feel bad though. I have a good friend of mine. He's the vice president of marketing for Gatorade. He's the vice president for marketing for Gatorade. And when I met his parents, somebody asked them, oh, what does your son do for a living? And they said, oh, my son, who's the vice president of marketing for Gatorade, he sells juice for a living. <laughs> so I shouldn't feel too bad. So they said, listen, Beta. You're not getting any younger, you're not getting any more attractive. It is time for you to go to Pakistan to have fun. <laughs> and I know that was code for go to Pakistan, meet your cousin, and pick one and get married. <laughs> so at that time, Alhamdulillah, I graduated. Now that well, I would go, but I don't have any money. Oh, fikr ni karo. Fikr means I don't worry about it. We will take care of it. I was like, okay, why not? I always wanted to go to Pakistan and been there for so many years. So I got to the airport with my brother. It was very normal, nothing really to talk about. And then we were getting on the plane. And the plane was called Pakistani International Airlines, PIA. What? Perhaps I arrived. Perhaps I arrived. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so while I was getting on the airplane, there's a little song going inside my head. And it just saying, Jeeve. Jive, Jive, Pakistan. And that's a very famous song if you're Pakistani. So right when I got onto the airplane, I, was, I left America. The door closed and I was no longer in the United States. I was in Pakistan. It smelled like Pakistan. The first person I saw on the airplane was an ordered gentleman with a mustache pouring tea. The music was Pakistani. And all the kindness and everything that we're used to in America just went out the window. <laughs> so I was sitting down, and I asked the flight attendant, uh, Excuse me, sir, may I please get a pillow? No. <laughs> and he walks away. I'm like, what just happened? So then a few minutes later, I was like, okay, that's fine. Uh, excuse me, sir, may I get a pillow? So the guy, he looks at me, he looks up, he finds that guy that just spoke to, and the guy says nothing, he just does this. <laughs> and the guy who I'm talking to does this. <laughs> and then he looks at me and he says, now is not a good time. And he walks away. <laughs> like, okay, cool. Alright. 
So it was late night, the flight was delayed, as PIA uh, often is. So everybody on the flight went to sleep. About two, three hours later, somebody came up to me, and I was deep in slumber, and they came up and started shaking me. They're like, what's up, Dad? What just happened? And I'm like, what happened? Are we going down? I said, no, 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 And the person looks at me, and I'm kind of cuddle. So please, it's time to eat, right? I'm like, no, 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 I'm tired, I'm tired, I don't want to eat. Come back later. The other, no, 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 like, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. Hello? So I'm like, okay, fine, I'll eat, I'll eat. So I wake up, and I'm like, are they doing that to me? And they go around the airplane, and they're like shaking people away, slapping people away. And I'm like, what is going on? So one of the older people on the airplane looks at me, and they're like, see, they're doing this, because if they don't wake somebody up for dinner, that person's gonna get really angry. I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? Nobody's gonna get angry if they don't wake up. So the guy sitting next to me, he was asleep, and he was knocked out. He was an uncle or guy, he was not gonna wake up. They were shaking him, slapping him, <laughs> signing the Quran on him, and he was, he was knocked out. So then a few hours later, we ate, a few hours later, they then served the next meal, and then at that time, that guy wakes up. He stretches, he presses the button to you know, call the stewardess. The stewardess comes over, he looks that stewardess right in the eye, and says, Man, I can't, I can't have. It's like, which means, let me eat right now. And the stewardess is like, okay, we are serving food right now. And he's like, no, no, not this food. The food that I paid for and you didn't serve me before. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I, the food you didn't serve me while I was sleeping. I am not born yesterday, I know. <laughs> but after the flight, we landed in Pakistan, and then it's going in my head, Jive, 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 Pakistan. So I get to the airport, I'm like, yes, my people. Uh, my country, this is where I was born, alhamdulillah, I'm in Lahore, Pakistan. And uh, right when I come in, a man in perfect English calls me and says, excuse me sir, if you pay me $100 right now, I'll get you through security, I'll get your bags checked, you won't have any issue, you will be out this door in five minutes. And I'm like, bro, astaghfirullah. I'm an Imani type of person, no, don't you see the Dariwala? I'm not going to give you 100 bucks. I'm not going to do that. And then I got in the line, and the line just went out the door, down the hall, up the elevator. I'm like, what is this? And then people were arguing with the person. So I'm like, okay, well that took forever. And then when, after I got past the line, we had to get our suitcases. So then of course, I would you know, stand by the conveyor belt, and a suitcase comes, somebody grabs their suitcase, wait for my suitcase, finally my suitcase comes, I go to grab it, and then somebody else grabs it. And I'm like, what is going on here? And the person who grabbed my suitcase was somebody who worked in the airport. They're the guys who are supposed to help me with their suitcases. But these guys don't help you with their suitcases. They force you to pay them to help you with their suitcases. So I went to grab it. He went to grab it. I was like, not today, bro. So I put it away from him. I put it in my cart. And then I was like, okay, next suitcase is coming. Next suitcase is coming. I got this. The guy, he stood there. And then he called for his buddies. So it's like me, that guy, another guy, another guy. They see the suitcase coming. So now I have to play the fence, you know. I put out like another suitcase to buy suitcase. I go for my suitcase, it gets grabbed. I go for my suitcase, grab it. They go and grab it. I push him off the side, put on my cart. Somebody takes my cart. They take it out the window. I run after that person. I get my cart. I leave the airport. And right before I leave, somebody says, all right, that's $20. I'm like, for what? We, we grab the suitcase. We help you with it. We push the cart, $20. And I was like, I stuck for a while. So I paid him the 20 bucks. And then we got on the rickshaw. Now, if any of you have not had the privilege, the real blessing, to go to another country and ride on a rickshaw, rickshaw the motorcycle. And then when the uncles came to them, I have a great idea. We were going to cut it, and we were going to put two wheels and a sofa in the back. And, and we are going to use it as a taxi. So I put my stuff on the rickshaw, got on the rickshaw, and I'm like, okay, where do I sit now? Because the suitcases were all on the chair. Like, you will sit in front of me on the handlebars. And I was like, I don't think that's safe. Beta, do you believe in Allah? Allah is your Mawlana. I was like, okay, I can't argue with that. But the trip went very well. I came back to America. Unfortunately, I didn't marry any of my cousins. Uh, but then, alhamdulillah, I did get married. I found a young lady, she's Jordanian, she's Arab, and alhamdulillah, we got married. Uh, what's interesting though, if any of you are interested in marrying somebody outside your culture, prepare for a culture shock. I want to give you a few cultural shocks that I had when I got married. 
when I first went to her house to propose, the auto, so the they see, when you meet somebody, you say, assalamu alaikum, and then they'll say, wa alaikum assalam, they'll shake your hand, and, and alhamdulillah, that's good. The Arabs, though, when I went to their house, I said, assalamu alaikum. Her brother, Muad, he came to me and said, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He grabs my hand, he then hugs me, he then takes me to the side and starts kissing me on the cheek. <laughs> Goes to the other cheek, <laughs> on the cheek, other cheek, and he holds on to my hand. I'm like, whoa, that was intense. Then his other brother, Hamuda, comes in. Ya Asalaamu Alaikum, Ya Habibi! So now that you hold both of my hands, because the Arabs, they don't let go. So now I'm being held like this. And then the third Arab comes, his name is Nadir. He's huge. He is like Omar bin Khattab's cousin. He comes, Ya Habibi! And he gives me this huge hug. He kisses me. He then grabs me by my face. Looks me deep in the eyes. And at that time, I didn't know what to do. So I go for the kiss. And that's the problem. Uh, last, last point, and I'll be done, inshallah. The Arabs are, mashallah, beautiful people, fantastic. They love hummus, baklava, um, olive oil. They can't really eat daisy food. Vulnerable people. But one of the problems with the Arabs is that they'll always tell you you're wrong. Always tell you wrong. As uh, beta beta, it's time for the zohar salah. La dohar. Okay. Uh, oh, it's the month of Ramadan. What is Ramadan? Ramadan. They'll even tell you your name is wrong. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, welcome Islam. What's your name? My name is Usman. La. La. Your name is not Usman. There's nobody named Usman in this world. Wallahi. I know my name. No, your name is Uthman. Have some pride, have some dignity. No, no, okay, maybe that's true. Maybe I was named after Uthman ibn Affan, but everybody calls me Uthman. No. Who named you that? My mother. Give me the phone. Let me call the mother right now. Ya Habibti. Ya Habibti. What's wrong with you? Why are you named your son Uthman? It's Uthman. And then the auntie on the other side said, Ya Beta, Beta, Sono, Sono, Ya Beta, Beta. Thank you all, even great. <laughs> So now, that, so now we know that if Faison ever gets tired of suing the FBI, he can always go on and do comedy because that was simply amazing. Another takbir. Okay, so our third act of the day. Now, these two people, okay, they're, they're something else. Um, what do you say?